I'm Michelle Ryan, and I'm the Fund Development Chair for the Board of Directors at Wise Place. And I've been involved with Wise Place for 30 years. I still don't believe it when I say it out loud, but it's true. And that begs the question, of course, why? Well, I can tell you that the answer is knowing it could be me. When I walked into Wise Place in 1990, I was a young executive and I was there to teach the women who were staying in the transitional shelter some basic financial skills, how to budget, how to establish credit to get a credit card, how to balance a checkbook. For those of you that remember paper checkbooks, we used to have to balance those. And once I was there, I realized it could be me. I had a good job. I had put myself through college. I had had some career success, but I didn't have a lot of family in the area. I didn't have a financial safety net. And although I can tell you that the people I worked for were a lot of good guys, I'm sure if they had been at that time forced to choose between me and someone that they perceived to be a breadwinner, I would have been the loser. So it could have been me. And that was the hook set 30 years ago. And what has kept me there for these 30 years are the lessons that I daily learn from the women at Wise Place. One of the most important is what I call the incremental. In my world as a finance professional, I was always searching for the big movements, the tectonic shifts in markets and technology, things that would move millions of people and millions and billions of dollars. And in that type of environment, you lose tra track of the small. You, you just don't see it. And it was the women of Wise Place that taught me to see and appreciate the incremental. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Many of our women come to us completely destitute. And when you look them in the eyes, they're dull, they're hopeless, they're tired. And you know when that moment happens that they are really seen for the first time, a little spark of light comes back into those eyes. And when you acknowledge some, something that they've accomplished or something useful that they've done to help someone else in in the shelter, you can restore a huge chunk of that woman's self-worth. So that's why the incremental is important because it's by increments that you bring the light back into a woman's eyes. <sighs> More lessons I've learned every day. If you've known me for very long, you're used to seeing me at this time of the year because it's gala season. And this year there can be no gala. And that's forced us to look at fundraising in new ways and to blow up the models that we've used because they're not sustainable in a pandemic and maybe they're not to be sustainable into the future. And we've come up with a lot of great creative ideas. Tonight, you'll be learning about one that is sustainable. As we sustain the women at Wise Place, we believe that this fundraising platform is sustainable. And we hope you'll join us on the ground floor 
of the Hope and Housing Alliance, which is essentially like-minded people joining together to create a safety net of funding for the programs that Wise Place delivers. By buying keys for one woman or many, at many levels or one, you will be joining an alliance that is sustainably funding the programs that we deliver and bringing a woman home. You will hear in tonight's launch party from staff members, other board members, program participants, and as you often are at this time of year, you'll be updated, hopefully you'll be informed and inspired. Most importantly, we hope you'll be moved. Move to join us in the Hope and Housing Alliance as this launch party celebrates and sustains the light in our women's eyes. I'm Michelle Ryan. Lopez, and this is my journey. I wrote this to share with you. At age 71, I became homeless after living with a cousin. It was not working out and I could not stay there anymore. I had nowhere to go. I was able to stay in my car in a garage. It was at the apartment of a friend. I was not supposed to be there. She took a risk because I had nowhere else to go. It was not great. I was so cold there. One Sunday at the Second Baptist Church, a kind lady told me about Wise Place. I met with the case manager at Wise Place and I was so happy I got into the shelter. At least I had somewhere to sleep in the night. The things I learned at Wise Place Shelter was amazing. It was wonderful to be there. I had counseling, I got financial advice, they helped me learn about housing. I learned how to take care of my health. Wise Place showed me how to prepare for my tax advisor. I learned computer knowledge from a wonderful volunteer. Wise Place helped me with my job search. I was provided shelter for two years. For two years, I was not cold. For two years, I was safe. When I moved out of Wise Place Shelter, I was employed part-time working as caregiver for the elderly. I was able to get part-time work and start to save money to pay my own rent. I have lived in this senior apartment in my own home since 2018. I have not been homeless for two years. So I try to get everything organized. At times I'm not organized at all and that confuses me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just fold them up like this and put them in here, this big one. I try to keep everything organized, you know, like this. I have my tops, my sleeping clothes here, my little washcloths here. Here I have my underclothes. And here I have my medication. All pack up here. <laughs> My, my husband, he was a musician. He played different 
instruments in his music band. He had two music bands. And he used to play more Spanish music. Well, that's what he's from. He was from Mexican parentage. But he was born in Bisbee, Arizona. Care of the little ones, infants. Yeah. I miss all of them. Oh, God bless them. And these are my Bibles. I have a whole ten of them. I have to give away some. You want any? Unfortunately, during COVID-19, I was not able to work. I got laid off. It was a struggle to pay my rent and bills. Wise Place was there for me again and helped me with financial assistance so that I would not become homeless again because of COVID-19. I was supposed to find a new part-time job and I am working again. I like to work. I am now 75 years old. I have made a secret promise to myself. I promise myself that you have to make it. I learned you just have to be steady and focus on your goals. Sometimes I slip up and forget. I think, oops, I slip up there. Then I remember the things I learned at Wise Place. I am grateful for Wise Place sharing me on and providing support and resources. I lived at home and I'm supported. I'm grateful for you for making this possible. Thank you for supporting Wise Place so that Wise Place could walk with me on my journey. I love my journey. If you are ever having a hard time, please remember me and know that you made a positive impact in my life. I am housed and I am safe thanks to you. Thanks to God, the Almighty. Amen. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining our first ever virtual event to launch our new initiative, the Hope and Housing Alliance. Um, first and foremost, I hope that this evening finds you and your family all safe and well. COVID-19 has affected every single one of us, not just our Orange County community, but our nation and the entire world. But imagine being homeless during a pandemic. I will never take for granted having a warm bed to sleep in, having access to nutritional food and clean water, and will never take for granted the safety of not having to live in my car or to live on the streets, especially as a female. With COVID-19, we now find ourselves a crisis within a crisis. And now more than ever, women need housing and the need has increased. And I know that with statistics and everything that we hear on the news, this sometimes seems insurmountable, but it's really not. And I am so fortunate to see change happen every day at Wise Place. And I know that at times in our virtual world, it's hard to feel connected or feel like there's something worthwhile to make a positive impact. Um, but tonight, my hope is that you remember that solutions to end homelessness happen at Wise Place every day, thanks to your support. And I am optimistic, and I hope you share in that optimism with me. Because optimism isn't just about hoping, 
but optimism is about action that we can all take together. And that action and that optimism can happen tonight. At Wise Place, we have the expertise and the experience to address these urgent healthcare and housing needs in Orange County, right here in our backyard. For more than 90 years, Wise Place has served one of the largest overlooked and underserved segments of our population, and that is unaccompanied women. One in every three homeless adults is an unaccompanied woman. And women over the age of 62 are the fastest growing segment of the population to experience homelessness. Wise Place, we are the only nonprofit here in Orange County that is solely focused on serving and addressing the very specific needs for unaccompanied women so that they do not have to face adversity alone. Thanks to your support, we are so proud to share that 75% of the women we serve annually transition to permanent, safe, and stable uh, permanent housing with increased incomes and savings, just like Anne-Marie, who you got to meet a few minutes before in the video. At Wise Place, our programs work, and they work because of your support. Thanks to you, we are able to pair housing solutions with comprehensive wraparound services. Services like clinical counseling, case management, financial and employment assistance, health and wellness support, and that's just to name a few. And with your help, this is just our beginning. Your support is truly the key to ending homelessness. We invite you and we hope that you join the Hope and Housing Alliance tonight. You can log onto our website at any time and become a founding member. Your donation will directly impact the life of one woman during this very critical time in our community. There are three keys to overcoming homelessness. There's the silver key, which is a $1,200 pledge, the $5,000 gold key, and the $10,000 black key. What I really appreciate about the $1,200 gold key, silver key is that it, it, it can be monthly payments of just $100. So that if I forgo, say, a few trips to Starbucks and a few takeout orders a month, that is $100. And that $100 a month for a year helps one woman with her deposit and first month's rent. The goal key is all about our wise place way. It's our clinical services and our case management to build trust and help women rebuild their lives. And the black key is our whole program. It's in, in its entirety. So it includes the deposit and the first month's rent and includes the clinical therapy and the case management, but it also includes things like meals. At Wise Place, we provide um, almost 40,000 meals a day and over 60,000 safe nights sleep a year. I'm sorry, we'd be really hungry if we were doing 40,000 meals a day. I meant almost 40,000 meals a year. So it's our whole wraparound service that ends homelessness for one woman. So tonight we have set a goal to support 20 women and raise $200,000 because homelessness doesn't pause for a pandemic and neither do we. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We could not do this without your help. I hope you enjoy the virtual launch and at any time you can log on to our website and it's the same uh, web address that you see on Facebook Live now and you can join the Hope and Housing Alliance. But before we hear from our shelter participants, it looks like we have our very first Hope and Housing Alliance member. for over 30 years. I
this for over 30 years for over 30 years i originally came to wise place as a board recruitment luncheon in 1980. i was busy i had my own business and i really didn't want to take on anything more uh, but i uh, came to the luncheon because my friends had asked me and uh, i the luncheons were served by our wise place uh, participants I immediately recognized the woman that was serving my lunch. She had, she had been a high school mate of mine, blonde, blue eyed, on the song team, very popular, everything that I wasn't, and here she was homeless. She had, been, she had come to Wise Place and she went through our program for eight or nine months, uh, and she's finally well and living happily ever after, but it dawned on me that there for the grace of God go I, and boy, isn't that the truth. Every day I feel that way. Uh, in 2017, I learned that Wise Place had, uh, was going through a lot of tough times and needed a lot of help. I volunteered for whatever reason to head up the capital campaign uh, to find ways to provide housing for women, uh, including permanent housing. Uh, I am now back on the board and still heading up our fundraising efforts and working with a great group of uh, very committed people. We have raised the level of discussion about homeless women and we have raised the level of discussion about Wise Place, two very important things in Orange County. It really is incredible to me to see the progress that we have made and hopes that Wise Place will be able to end homelessness for women in Orange County. You know, of course, none of this could be made without the community's support, especially my dear friend, Bill Hirsch. He's CEO of Affordable Housing Access. They operate in five or six states and all over the state of California. They also put their money where their mouth is and have been big supporters of Wise Place since I introduced them over 10 years ago. AHA shares our vision of getting women off the streets and into safe housing. I'd like to introduce Bill Hirsch. Thank you, Eileen. AJ was introduced to Wise Place by our long-term friend and advisor, Eileen Padber. Eileen has a heartfelt passion for Wise Place's mission and as a good little missionary brought AHA into the fold. Our mission at AHA is purchasing and or building affordable rental housing and then preserving it into the future, sometimes 30 to 55 years. So we have an inventory of affordable rentals and Wise Place turns out graduates that are excellent clients. It's been a good match. We strongly, strongly support Wise Place's vision for ending homelessness for unaccompanied women through housing and their wraparound services that provide a path to independence. The Wise Place program is incredibly effective, demonstrating a 75 plus percent success rate to transition into permanent housing. They do some heavy lifting over there. So on behalf of Eileen, myself, and AHA, we're pr proud to pledge $10,000 to the Hope and Housing Alliance. Come on and join us. Thanks a bunch. Way to go, Eileen and Bill. Thank you so much for being founding members of our Hope and Housing Alliance with your $10,000 donation. Needless to say, it's much appreciated, and we look forward to raising more money today. Needless to say, if you've looked at the website, you know that we have three keys. We have opportunities for you to donate your money. Um, but before I go any further, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Meg O'Toole, and I am the president of the board of directors at Wise Place. I've been involved with the program for 25 years. I've been a past board president, I've been chair of fund development, I've been chair of the gala, I've been a regular board member, you name it, I've done it at Wise Place. Um, I'm also a volunteer. I go every Christmas morning with my sister. And that's one of our favorite things to do because number one, I get to meet our clients. But more importantly, I think it's a great reminder of where we are as people because it never fails that one woman at least tells me every Christmas that this is the best Christmas she ever had. And think about that, people. She is in a women's shelter and is so happy with the programs and services that we're offering that she thinks this is the greatest time of her life. And I'm gonna go home to my home and cook dinner for my family and she's at a women's shelter. 
So there are a lot of reasons for you to look at Wise Place. Needless to say, this has been a tough year, 2020, not just for us, but for anybody. But 2021 looks bright. Uh, 2020, we had what everybody else had. Uh, we have residents who lost their jobs. They had trouble building their nest egg. We had trouble finding them places to live, which is all part of our program. If you look on the website, you'll know that. Uh, but having said all of the above, that's why we're here. And we need to raise more money to make sure our future continues to be right and bright in 2021. So I would like to join with Bill and Eileen and also provide a $10,000 contribution. And that's important because if they're going to be founding members of our alliance, I want to be the second one in just so I can encourage everybody else to also come on board. But more importantly, again, we're looking for your support. And I have friends who support, and I want to do a shout out for them as well. Uh, I have a pledge of $10,000 from my friends, Mary Lou Martin and Chris Byrne. Thank you, Mary Lou and Chris. I've also got some $1,200 contributions from uh, my friend, Jeannie Heidi, from my sister, Melanie, from my friends, Kay, my friend, Sharon, and that is just the beginning. I know that as we continue, we will continue moving ahead and doing very well. So thank you all for your support and I look forward to seeing you soon. Some more videos. Really? Am I on? All right. Oh, Hi, everybody. I'm back. Yeah. It's Mich Wait. Am I? There I am. Okay. <laughs> it's Michelle Ryan, and I am the fund development director, chair for Wise Place. As you know, uh, for over two decades, we have hosted at this time of year an event called a home for the holidays. And so you're, you know, accustomed to me pitching you at this time of year. Last year, we had an event called uh, a night in Wonderland. And we raised a record amount of money, $265,000. Shout outs tonight to the chair co-chairs of that event last year. Amber Omrin and uh, Debbie, Debbie Murray and our honorees, Harriet Harris and AHA, Affordable Housing Access. You saw Bill Hirsch a little while ago. But this year, there can be no gala. There can be no event like that. And so we have decided, I've got some beautiful friends here. Yeah. We are Ooh. going to celebrate at home for a holiday. So we looked on the holiday calendar and the holiday calendar for October 17th is wear something gaudy today. It's also sweetest day, which I was unfamiliar with, but I am super pumped about because it's a holiday that celebrates love and charity by eating sugary treats. So I'm all about that. So, um, <clears throat> so, we're here in our gaudy finery, looking forward to some sugary treats to celebrate the launch of the Hope and Housing Alliance. All my beautiful friends in their gaudy finery. Um, so my job is to give you all an update on where we are so far. So now it's time for me to check my texts and see where we stand. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm verklempt. <laughs> we are at $72,000 in just 20 minutes. Woo! Woo! Oh my God, this is amazing. Thank you so much to all of you wonderful and generous people who always support Wise Place. You move me every year. I am amazed and 
so deeply, deeply blessed by what you do for us. And so, as you know, I said earlier, I'm, we're very excited about this new platform. We believe it's sustainable. We want to sustain our women. And so I want to let you know that my husband, Tim, and I, Tim, wave, <laughs> are going to join the Alliance on the ground floor by buying a black key for $10,000. And all of my beautiful friends, all of my beautiful, gaudy friends are also joining the Alliance. So that brings our total so far up to $90,000. Oh my goodness. Wow. This has so exceeded our expectations and we are so, so happy. I, I'm confident that you guys are going to get us to our goal of $200,000 tonight. So please go to wiseplace.org slash alliance and make your pledge. Buy a key. Um, there's a link in the Facebook Live, uh, I believe. So I hope that you'll be joining us. Um, next up, we're going to be interviewing one of our residents, Annie, for a deep dive into what the program is for a residence and a resident, sorry, a participant, and what it is that your money is going to support. So I hope that you enjoy that. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for what you're doing. And here's Annie. Yes. Mama B. Ah. <laughs> so good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. How are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. Annie, thank you so much for spending um, some time with us today. I know um, it is weird to not be in the same room together and not in the same building together, but you know, with COVID-19, it's just a Zoom kind of world. So, so thank you for doing this with us. Well, absolutely, everything on Zoom, so this is, this is what it is. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad we have it. Otherwise, can you imagine? I'm able to see somebody but I don't care. I can talk to you on the phone. Just, just let me talk to you. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. I mean, there's still ways that we can connect and of mm -hmm. course it's different, but there's definitely still connection. And so, um, again, thank you for doing this for us. I'm so excited. Um, you know, you are sunshine at Wise Place and, oh, thank you. um, I know for me kind of being a newer staff member when I first got there, just meeting you, um, you really were sunshine in my day every day, and I just looked forward to seeing you. And so I'm happy that our uh, Wise Place family and our volunteers and our donors and supporters um, get to get to hear from you and just get to, uh, you know, share. They get to hear uh, some of your experiences at Wise Place. So we're just going to go for it. You know, we're obviously we're not a professional um, camera team, but, you mm -hmm. know, this is the way of the world. So we're just going to get into it. And thank you. You're welcome. I'm honored. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Annie, um, can you share with us, like, you know, everybody's journey is so different. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have the honor and privilege of meeting so many different women um, with so many different experiences at Wise Place because, um, you know, life is, is just, is different for people. And so can you share with me, you know, how did you find Wise Place? What brought you to Wise Place? Huh. Well, mom, actually, um, I found out about Wise Place two years before I actually got there. Um, I was in an abusive marriage and that was just to my breaking point. I left my husband. Um, I left my husband just thinking that I would have somewhere to go pretty easy. Um, I talked to my sister-in-law who's in the field. She taught me about 211 because I didn't even know about 211 because um, I'm a teacher. Um, you know, I'm a retired teacher now. I'm disabled now. Um, and so um, calling 211, I got different leads. And when they couldn't help me, they gave me other referrals. And so I don't know, after about 20 phone calls, <laughs> I found out about Wise Place. And at that time, it was in process, and because I was disabled and I could not work, I qualified for the program for that. Um, but because I didn't have uh, in place the financial income that was necessary 
I was not able to be admitted into the program. So then that is me having to go back home. And, and my husband making the promises now that I've been educated through the agency that I have been aligned with because of you all, I understand that whole process of that whole cycle and, you know, wooing the victim back in and all that. And then within a matter of less than two years, it was pretty much back and beyond what it was to prior. Um, so at that point, it was so bad that I had to tell my husband that I was looking for a place to go. I was actually looking for a room to rent. And um, he just took it upon himself to just change the locks on me one night without telling me. He knew I didn't have anywhere to go. He knew I didn't have any money. And um, he locked me out. And so because of that, so I came to Wise Place because I already knew about it from two years prior. And so when I had my interview, I didn't know what that was gonna look like, but I had the interview. And there was one ABA room and one bed that was just for me. And the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Annie, that's really powerful because um, domestic violence last year in 2019, uh, 50, over half, 58% of the women that we served um, were, were like they were, uh, they left an abusive partner um, and they came to Wise Place. And then in Orange County, right here in our backyard, you know, domestic violence in terms of women experiencing homelessness, it's the second reason why women experience homelessness. So it's not all these other things that are myths out there. Um, domestic violence and abusive um, partnerships are very real in our county and across the nation. Uh, and specifically to women experiencing homelessness. So I know that's hard, you know, and I thank you for sharing that because there are so many women um, out there, um, unfortunately, experiencing homelessness. And so um, through you and your journey, they'll know that they are not alone. Um, and it's so powerful to hear you say, you know, when you were struggling and feeling unsafe that you sought out Wise Place two years earlier, but when you were kind of ready, ready to leave, um, ready I was forced to, to leave. I wasn't ready to leave. Nothing was in place. And my husband knew that, you know, mm. and it was pretty amazing when I got there. I mean, I had no idea. I mean, I've heard statistics for homelessness, but I had no idea the magnitude of homelessness for single citizens. Mm -hmm. We're on a fixed income that doesn't increase, even if rents increase. And I was just introduced to the realities of what I did not even know was going on. And I was so... I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I've never been homeless. Well, no, I can't say that numerous times because of this whole thing here and there. But I mean, I, I was never homeless at 60, <laughs> you know? Um, and then just to hear the stories of the women there. I mean, I, I remember one lady that she was in a car accident with her husband and he was killed in the car accident. She lived in another state and had to come out here to be with family and they didn't have anywhere to house her. And I mean, people are homeless for all different reasons. You know, people losing spouses, people losing their place of residence because um, rents are going up and the salaries are not. And you find yourself just being, um, I don't want to say a victim. You just find yourself a, uh, in circumstances that are beyond your control. And you, so many people are one paycheck away from being on the street. Yeah, well, I thank you for sharing. Um, so what did you do? Um, where did you live in, in that meantime? So, you know, your experience. Oh, uh, in my car, or, you know, um, but mostly in the car, you know, maybe here or there, you know, so I'm 60, I was 100 pounds heavier than I am now. And um, so it's not conducive to good spinal health. And, you know, plus I'm uh, osteoarthritic hip. And so it was very difficult, you know, physically difficult, emotionally difficult, mentally difficult. Any difficulty level <laughs> was impacted. But, you know, if it hadn't been for Wise Place, I, I shudder to even imagine. I don't even want to think about it because, I mean, when I found out that the one room had one bed, I knew that, that that my God was for real. I mean, I just, because when I got in there, people were being put on waiting lists, mm -hmm. upstairs and downstairs, so. Yeah, know. 
tough, you know, it's, it's tough. And that's why we, we have visions to kind of expand um, in the future um, because there are so many women, vulnerable women um, facing adversity and we don't want them to face adversity alone like yourself. You, uh, you don't deserve to live in a car, but you know, Annie, and I'm sure you know this, but you know, you're not alone in that so many women um, before they come to Wise Place, their um, shelter has been their car. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, you're not- I've you're met them and talked with them personally. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah. So um, you, from living in your car, you come to Weiss Place. Um, and so tell me about what was your first day or first week like? What did you feel at Weiss Place? Relief was the biggest thing, you know, that I had somewhere safe. You know, my husband didn't know where I was at. Um, this really the biggest thing was safety safety and then you fed us and <laughs> you gave us toiletries <laughs> i didn't have any money for toiletries <laughs> yeah. um you know and with my income i have a, a menial pension because of the amount of time of service as a teacher and my my income only covers my overhead pretty much you know i couldn't i couldn't even really afford a room rental really I mean, right. it's only because of what I was paying there that I was able to pay my bills on time mm -hmm. so that my financial status at least could be protected if nothing else till I could do better. Like my, my sister-in-law said, Annie, no, nobody, nobody should stay in abuse, an abusive marriage to try to keep a marriage so the family can say that there's a marriage in the family because that was the underlying current of so much divorce in my family. So yeah that's powerful so talk to me about that because we're talking about um you know emotional support psychological support so you know one of our um keys today supports the case management supports the clinical counseling to really unpack kind of all that learned trauma that you're talking about and um kind of develop strategies uh, to apply in your life that work for you. So can you talk to me about um, your case management and how that was to set goals and achieve them and celebrate successes? Um, just talk to me about that because um, I hear in what you're saying, it was such an important part of your journey to kind of work on, work on the trauma. Mm -hmm. um. When I got to Wise Place, my Medicare, because I just been awarded Medicare, I guess about a year. Um, so with me being homeless, I didn't get my Medicare bills, which resulted in by the time I got to Wise Place that I was terminated. And it actually took me over a year of battling with the Social Security Administration for my Medicare to get in place, reinstated. Um, so I'm already diagnosed with bipolar at age 28. I know and have to keep my psychological maintenance, uh, emotional, mental maintenance. Um, and if it hadn't been for Wise Place um, providing that for me for free, because I had no income. I mean, I had no medical coverage. Um, and I'm on medication, I have to have my medication. Um, the, um, um, the services that I was given, um, the therapy that I was given there, um, my therapist was very good, very knowledgeable, and where her uh, knowledge did. she had professionals that she conferred with if I had uh, an issue that, that she wasn't aware of she researched for me and by the time we met again she gave me some tangible tools books or whatever I was aligned with so many agencies um, here um, I learned about what this whole whole thing is all about um, you know all the abuse the cycles I took an empowerment uh, personal empowerment class uh, through one of the agencies that you all align me with and it's something that every every person but every woman especially needs because here I'm 60 years old but I was learning at every class I mean I'm educated I have my bachelor's degree I have five years to get my teaching credential I have a year and a half of graduate study so it's not like I'm uninformed and uneducated but even with what was presented to me because of them knowing the foundation that's necessary 
Um, I learned at every meeting. I learned about other agencies. I learned about, I just learned, it was, I mean, from cybersecurity. I mean, that particular program was 10. And just to have uh, the case manager help me stay focused because when I got to Wise Place, I mean, when you're thrown out on the street, I mean, I was driving through the street the next morning in tears. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't have any money. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, until you're in that, you have no idea what it's like. And then at 60, you're not expecting at 60 in your golden years to be homeless, you know, after you have had 20 years of service, um, serving children and adults and everybody. But I couldn't have made it with that without everything. I mean, I was given, um, you all had an affected tooth extracted for me. I mean, I got my hair trimmed. I mean, you, you, so many things that we take for granted that I would normally have to pay for that I didn't have money to pay for. When I needed my hair trimmed, there was um, an organization that came in, a, a beauty salon to volunteer, cut our hair. And then the lady who was the owner told me that she would color my hair and she would color it for free. I've been toting around, at least before I left, before I was thrust into homelessness, I had my, my dye kit, right? And I've been holding on to it. She said, come on and I will do it. I mean, I got glasses. There was a, an a, a organization that came in and provided uh, eye exams and free glasses. I could pick out my own frames. I mean, this is the type of life that I'm used to living anyway, but it was still afforded me that though I was with those circumstances. I mean, it was just totally amazing. When I say that everybody I come in contact with, <laughs> I'm telling about white place and telling them, it, cause it's, you don't plan to be homeless. You don't know if your spouse is going to die. You don't, you just, uh, one lady, I mean, she, she made six figures in just circumstances. She had to, just deplete her savings because she took care of her mother that was uh, struggling with cancer and ended up dying and then the place where she was living I forgot what happened but she couldn't live there anymore then she couldn't afford the rents that were in the area I mean you just don't know the circumstances that can result in homelessness at the blink of an eye I mean when I left that morning I didn't know that night I was <laughs> gonna be homeless I didn't take no clothes with me I mean I didn't have no clothes <laughs> you know so I mean and my husband I had just seen him just within a matter of hours before I went home he didn't even tell me that he had changed a lot so he waited for me to come home and then I found out he changed a lot when I was escorted by police to get up into my house my my place of dwelling so people people have problems you know sometimes they choose not to deal with them and so then that causes other people to be victims of their decisions and their decision not to get themselves the help that they need, emotional and mental health. Annie, you are a survivor, you know, and the more that I listen to you talk, the more I am reminded of that. And I hope that you know that and you know that we are always, um, you know, right by your side. Um, Annie, you are in what we at Wise Place call PS House. So mm -hmm. you are first in our main transitional shelter. And for those that don't know, we have um, an additional program offsite that we call Positive Step House, PS House. And so um, you're there now. So talk to me about the transition for you. What was that like? Um, what are you up to at PS House? Child, I got it going on. I can wash my clothes whenever I want to. I can eat, I can have all the food I want in the refrigerator in the cupboard. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? No, okay. Man, first of all, I'm honored because it was even extended to me. And it was extended to me because I was to a place because I had to stop working. I could not work emotionally, mentally. I could not work. Um, but when I look at my overhead and my income, when I saw it on paper, when my case manager helped me to see it on paper, it's like, I need a job. <laughs> So she helped me, she helped me create a resume, you know, empowered me with um, bitter tools because it had been a long time since I had been interviewing. Um, and so because of the history of what you guys saw me do at Wise Place, you all extended to me to come here ahead of me actually securing the position that I had been applying for, um, which was for me an honor because it's, you know, I just thank God that you all have the foresight 
and um, the heart of compassion to know that sometimes guidelines need to be adjusted a little bit, you know. Even uh, adjusting, Annie. <laughs> no, ooh, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I, ooh. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, because actually I had a um, room rental while I was at Wise Place. And you all were so gracious and had the funding to be able to help me with the down with the um, the move-in cost. And the um, owner, the property owner, just before I was about to move in, had an emergency and had to go to another state to help her daughter. And in going there, her daughter had two disabled children. When she came back, she told me, "I have to go help my daughter. I have to relocate and sell my house." I had to check. It took me a week to recover from that because. All that I, all, it was almost eight months. I mean, well, it was six months at that point. But all that you have to go through to find a place, find a place that you can afford, find a place that's safe, you know, to live in. And so many, so many, um, so much to be considered. And then to, I can, I can breathe, I can exhale. And then I got the check in hand because you guys provided it for me. And then I can't move into it. That was almost devastating. And so then it's like, well, it took me a week to get that momentum because I was on such a momentum. Then I, I had to start it again. It was like, okay, here I go again, here I go again. It's just so much that goes into that emotionally and mentally, you know. Um, and then so I was looking again. And then you extended this to me because I'd applied for a position with 211. I was applying here, I was applying there. So because you know that I'm proactive, because you know that I follow your instructions, because you know that I'm teachable, you extended me that opportunity. Um, and so I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, you know, and what was such a, a gift to me is that all the women except one, I already knew. I knew them all from Wise Place I had all, and, and, and interfaced with all of them. I had a rapport with all of them already, so it wasn't like I was just plopped into a very foreign environment. And then the house is so lovingly decorated and the neighborhood is beautiful. You love coming home, driving down the street. And you know that you don't have to stay in your car. You know that you don't, you don't, you, you just, it's, I, I just can't explain it. It's just, it's just a gift from God. You guys are a gift from God. The agency is a gift from God. The donors are a gift from God. The people that come in to volunteer. I mean, it was so many levels that people come in to volunteer. They come in, they bring food, they serve it to us out of love. It's all in their faith. That's it's so just, true. I love, we just, just love the volunteers. And, you know, obviously talk about adapting and adjusting. We've, since COVID-19, obviously we've had all of our volunteers be remote, but when they do contactless drop-offs, I mean, you see it, even though everyone's covered in masks. I mean, the, the eyes are so telling and, and and uh, the volunteers have um, just done so much and continue to do so much for Wise Place and we're so incredibly thankful. But, you know, thank you, Annie, because really it is your resilience. Um, the fact that you are, you know, taking advantage of everything that's offered, right? You're, you're coming to the workshops, you're going to see the case manager, you're doing the counseling, you know, you are doing the hard work. So thank you for saying thank you to Wise Place, but really we want to thank you. Um, because you are engaging in all of the wraparound services. Um, and you know, it's hard because I had kind of forgotten that you had that setback, right? That you had an apartment and you went through the budgeting and the savings and then the, the permanent home that you had identified mm -hmm. um, for the reasons that you described um, was no longer an option. Um, mm -hmm. You are at, you know, our Wise Place PS house and you are rebuilding and it's, mm -hmm. you know, I really applaud you for doing that because to do that during COVID-19 is not hard, but you are engaging in all the services and it is just a matter of time. It is just a matter of time before you do go into your permanent home. Yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And being with all the services that you all provided and the safety there allowed me to maintain my optimism because if I didn't have all the support, I don't think that I would have been as optimistic and hopeful. I mean, um, I mean, even when you walk down the corridor from my room, just down to the kitchen, I mean, there's so many positive statements that I've passed by on the wall. 
you know, um, many, many uh, uh, sobbing spells have the administrators sat and supported me through because this was devastating. It, you don't think that's what's going to happen to you at 60 years old after you've gone through all you've gone through to get to where you've gotten, even though there's been a lot of other trauma in my life, but um, you keep it pushing, but. And you, you are, just, you know, you're, you're keeping it, you're keeping it pushing, you're saving money. Yes. Um, and, you know, the, the significance of what you mention is, um, you know, kind of our first key, if you will, it's our uh, silver key because so many people, um, you know, we, we, sometimes we forget what it's like your first month into your own home, that even though you're working and you're saving or whatever your circumstances, that your first month you have to put down a down payment, you're going through credit. Don't remind me, Mama B, don't remind me of that. <laughs> I wanna keep my money in the bank where it is right now. So well, I can see it on the statement, I wanna see it on the statement. <laughs> I love that, I love that. Check your statement, Danny. Yeah. You know, you're not alone. I guess that's what I wanna make sure that, um, well, that you uh, remember that that you know we help the significance of helping support a woman like Annie um, with her deposit, with her application fees, with some furnishings like a bed, a table, a, a refrigerator. Um, we have so many great supporters who help put together welcome home baskets as well. But really, oh, yes, the yes, yes. burden of the first month comes in those application fees, in the moving costs, in the down payment. Usually you have to put first month's and last month's down payment. So in addition to your rent. So um, you keep checking that bank statement because, <laughs> you know, Wise Place and our supporters, you know, that's, we're so proud. This is kind of a new initiative for us. We've been doing it for almost two years now where we can consistently support um, a woman transitioning into her permanent home with application fees, with first month's rent, with deposits, everything, uh, furnishings, all the things that make that first month move so overwhelming, even when you're saving and checking your bank statements like Annie's mm -hmm. doing. <laughs> because, you know, like you said, you know, if I would have moved into my own place, I probably could have maybe afforded to buy a mattress. I wouldn't have been able to buy a refrigerator or stove probably if it didn't come with the place and I probably wouldn't have had money to buy furniture. So coming to PS house, I mean, it's fully, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's beautiful and everything is here. Everything is here. And oh my God, when we got our, we had our graduation, when I tell you that the, the agency, the, the organization that gave us our moving gifts, when I tell you that they, they didn't leave anything unturned. I mean, they gave me a can opener, a can opener. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. If I Don't moved worry. into my own place, I wouldn't have even had to buy anything basic. I mean, dishes, pots, um, the um, yep. bedding. I mean, I cried. I think I cried for, I don't even know how long I cried, but it's like, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> Why place? My place family does. I got we truly, My gosh. truly Annie. You hit the nail on the head. Like our Wise Place family of volunteers and our which includes of course our board of directors, just the community. Um, you know, it was so overwhelming in those first several weeks of COVID nineteen and it truly was the grace and the just the open heart of my phone and email ringing off the hook and people saying what do you need because we know you all are you know essentially first responders you are stepping up for the community and what do you need and that was that was a part of it and so um yeah i love that you loved your welcome home gift we make sure oh wait a minute now let me tell you this <laughs> they they had everything covered down to foil and plastic wrap yeah, so we get that. That's not itemized. I mean, yeah, so the we asked, <laughs> like, in um, participant feedback and lived in experience is so important to me and so important to making sure that that always stays at Wise Place. So we, we would ask, we would ask um, our alumni and our graduates, you know, what, what did you need? What do you need? And so we made a really long list and um, the volunteers have stepped up and big shout out to the assistance leave of Orange in particular. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> but all of our volunteers who, you know, okay. shop up our wish list and, and make sure that while ladies are at Wise Place, whether it's at our 
main shelter or our PS house, but also when they go to their own home. Um, and so uh, we're, we're excited to do that again, Annie, because you are deserving of a permanent home. We, of course, are here for you. Um, so we're going to kind of wrap up, but tell me, just leave us with, you know, what, what does being at Wise Place mean to you? It means that I have a creator who loves me because everything I needed was provided through you all. Whatever wasn't offered directly through you, I was aligned by the creator through you to everything I needed in the community. And so it's given me uh, a sensitivity. And I mean, not that I embrace adversity, but I mean, and adversity is where you really develop. Um, it's when you really learn. It's when you're really molded. It's when you really learn how to be grateful. Mm -hmm. How to be grateful. And to be able to give hope to my sisters and people that I may encounter on the streets or wherever that just hold on. Here's, here's an agency to call or I know about this class or I know about something that can help you if I go through it so that I can help somebody else. That's what keeps me going because I'm not living just for me. And so it's helped me to develop my life's work. I want to do this. I'm getting ready to be a peer support specialist to to other of my peers that are living to overcome a mental health condition and they're going into the mental health field so that we can help others that have mental health issues it's all about working together on this planet you know to make the planet better so yeah thank you so much i know that our volunteers and supporters and community that we serve, the Wise Place family, um, we are all cheering you on. You are an incredibly special, um, smart, kind, driven, beautiful human being. And we just have the honor to walk alongside you. So thank you so much for opening up your heart and talking a little bit. I know it's hard to not be in the same room and be behind these computers, but you know, we are still connected and we are incredibly proud of you. And um, this is just a new beginning and we are um, excited to see your journey continue to grow. Um, and we are all here for you. Thank you. I know. And I need a hug. So you got to give me an air hug before. Just, you know. I don't. Do you feel it? Do you oh, feel yes. it? <laughs> Ooh, I couldn't have made it with all the hugs you gave me over, the, over those months I was there. Um, <laughs> I miss those hugs. I miss those hugs. You, you, you got the best hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, have a beautiful rest of your day. Keep looking at those bank statements and saving that money. Heck um, yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we're here for it. We're here for it. Yeah, um, thank you. Annie, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, thank you, Mama B. Later. Bye. Bye. How amazing is Annie? Um, we just love her and we are so honored that she took the time this evening to just kind of share in her journey. Um, your support makes Annie's journey possible. Thank you for standing alongside Wise Place as we provide the services, but the services are not possible without each and every one of you. Um, we have an update. Um, we have raised $196,000 um, out of our $200,000 goal. I think that speaks to um, Annie's testimony and the journey of the women of Wise Place as they truly have gone through so much and they are doing the hard work and really engaging in all the services that we provide um, to build a better life for themselves. So thank you um, for being a silver key member, a gold key member and a black key member because your support, uh, your investment uh, directly supports women like Annie and women like Anne Marie. Woo, that is, I'm so excited. <laughs> 
Um, we just want to give a few quick shout outs. We hope, you know, in this virtual world, we've never done a virtual event, but I think it's going pretty well. Um, but as we've asked, been asked, um, where do you donate? So it is in the comment section, it is on the videos, and it is bottom at the scroll right now. So it is wiseplace.org. And if you go on our website, it's gonna be the first thing you see. There's a button that says learn more, and it takes you to the Hope and Housing Alliance page so that you can learn more and become a member. Um, we wanna do some shout outs and hopefully you have seen your names on the scrolls. But thank you again to AHA and Eileen Padberg for being our first official Hope and Housing Alliance members and Meg, our board chair, and then Michelle, talk about uh, one after another, a powerhouse. Um, and then Eileen actually donated an additional uh, gold key member. Uh, thank you, Eileen, you are incredible. And so many people know Wise Place because of um, your heart for Wise Place and the heart, your heart for our mission. So thank you to Mary Lou Martin, Rick Julian, Celine Miller, Trish Nichols. Um, so many things I gotta change the page. Uh, PCV Murkor for standing by our side for decades and coming in as a, a Black Key member. Um, Keiko and Bill, thank you so much. Sheila Sun and Shine, Marina Landscape, you have been a game changer for Wise Place. Thank you for helping us out in the first days of COVID. Um, I called you and you didn't blink an eye. You didn't hesitate for one second to help us build dividers to get PCP piping and linens and build these dividers, create safe barriers um, in the very early stages in March of COVID-19. You have um, introduced us to so many incredible people. And we thank you so much. People like Ron Hansen, Don Laws, Geraldo Flores, Terry Nguyen, um, Ali, Kristen, Nikki Williams, Claudia, Mike, uh, Amanda, um, and just so many people. And thank you to everybody uh, joining uh, Michelle's the socially distanced and safe party. Thank you so much. Um, Paul and Patty McDonald, Song, Trisha, Rick and Kathleen, your continued support of Rice Place um, makes our work possible. What we wanted to do is as we're, we're still kind of tallying up behind the scenes, we wanted to give a quick shout out to what we call our COVID heroes who truly shined the brightest light at Wise Place um, since the pandemic hit. Um, as most of you know, we serve such a large uh, population of senior women. Over 40% of the women we serve at Wise Place are over 60 years old and over 42% are physically disabled. So when our community was hit with the pandemic, and we were reading the CDC guidelines. We knew immediately that our women were the most vulnerable at Wise Place because they had compromised health and because of their um, age. And so what we did in the very beginning, the first week of March, we took decisive action and we uh, kind of spread out our services so that we weren't 102 women plus puppies and kitties at the shelter. And so we privately funded uh, motels so that each woman who had compromised health, who was more vulnerable because of COVID-19, had her own room and her own bathroom so that we didn't have over 100 women kind of in one place at our shelter. And we did that for about three or four months. Um, and then we were able to take advantage of the uh, project room key resources from the state of California. Um, but I'm so glad that we did not wait for those resources um, because we took decisive action. And that's why I am so proud of my team. So shout out to every counselor, every case manager, every advocate, every office support, all the program managers. Um, we have not had a single outbreak of COVID-19, not to our staff and not to the women that we have the honor to serve. And that was truly only possible because of your commitment to Wise Place. Um, we got 
so many emails, so many people sponsored a meal, so many people sponsored cleaning, so many people just sponsored all of our increased expenses. And so we thank you. So we hope you enjoy this video. And if you please continue to join the Hope and Housing Alliance by going on our website, um, backslash alliance. So wiseplace.org um, and enjoy this video. I'm a trial attorney in Irvine. I became involved with Wise Place a couple of years ago when Eileen Padberg tapped me for the capital campaign. Until then, I'm a little embarrassed to say that despite my hundreds, if not thousands of trips in and out of Santa Ana, I never knew Wise Place existed. I didn't know there was such a thing as a shelter for unaccompanied women. And I certainly didn't know that such a shelter was just down the street from the courthouse where I would go every day. Some people have a stereotype of the homeless and there really should be no stereotypes because there are so many different reasons why people become homeless. At Wise Place, it might surprise you to know that over 40% of the residents are over the age of 60 over 35% of them are physically disabled. And another 25% or more have been victims of domestic violence. Most of the women at Wise Place have not been chronically homeless. They have been housed, they have had jobs. They might've been secretaries or they might've worked in retail or run their own small business, but something happened. Either they had to care for an elderly parent or partner, or they had to care for a sick child, and they were taken out of the workforce. Then when that person died, they found themselves homeless, or they had a medical bankruptcy. They themselves, or a spouse, or someone in the family had such massive medical bills that they were overwhelmed, even if they had health insurance. 
or they became physically unable to work and lost their housing. This is not the image that many of you have of a homeless woman, but it is the true image of many of the people who live at Wise Place. I think we're all in this together, women are. We've always helped each other. Women have been our strongest support in our personal lives and we should be the strongest support for women we don't know who have found themselves homeless and are at Wise Place now. If we don't take care of each other, who's going to? I think the answer to that is pretty clear. And that's why I have volunteered to help with the Hope and Housing Alliance for Wise Place that helps to fund Wise Place's everyday operations. It hurts me to think of even one woman having to leave Wise Place because in this horrible time of COVID, the funds are drying up. So we have to rally, ladies. We have to rally and help and make sure that doesn't happen. And together we can go on and make this world a better place. Hello everybody, I'm Harriet Harris and I'm a longtime supporter since 1987 of the YWCA Hotel for Women now known as Wise Place. Today we are proud to pledge $10,000 as a Black Key member of the Hope and Housing Alliance. We can't live without Wise Place. We need them, the women in our community need them, and we hope you'll all support them as well. Thank you, Wise Place, for all you do for the community. And you go, girls. I'm doing great, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for being with us. I know you've had a, a long day at work, so I really appreciate That's your time. Pleasure. Um, Jennifer, we're so excited um, to have this kind of casual conversation. Um, I know it's so weird not being in the same room and, and getting to um, kind of share in that way, but uh, it's COVID-19 and so we are keeping everybody safe and separated. Um, so I just wanted to maybe start as we kind of learn, learn about you and our volunteers and supporters can um, learn about you is just to ask you, you know, what, how did you find out about Wise Place or what brought you to Wise Place? Um, I was in treatment at Phoenix House last year and several of the girls are being referred to Wise Place uh, upon their graduation. And I had planned to go to a sober living, uh, but then my probation funding dried up at the last minute and I had nowhere to go. So I went and I interviewed and so I got in a few weeks later and I was really happy that I ended up going there instead of the probation um, funded home because it was closer to everything I needed and the support was a lot better, I really believe. Um, but that was how I found it. And I had a lot of friends there already um, yeah, so that's how I found it originally. Got it. So when you say there was a lot of support there, had you, um, maybe heard about the services or can you share a little bit more about, um, uh, how we were able to support? Um, well, we had the weekly, um, employment meetings, um, and then there was also one-on-one -on -one employment time, almost any time you asked. So I was out there looking for a job almost every day. And even when I couldn't find a job right away, um, no one ever gave up on me. No one ever gave me a hard time. I just kept interviewing and um, case management just had my back the whole time. Um, I was given resume help. Um, I was given um, help with my credit report, trying to get my financial wreckage in order, <laughs> the things I hadn't looked at in a long time. Um, I'm still getting help with trying to get my back taxes in order, my IRS help. Um, I was getting help with um, seeing a psychologist again, picking up where my last one had left off and get, um, trying to get through with a new one. Um, when I was sick, they brought in a doctor right away. They had a doctor come see me. Um, I didn't have to go try and find one. They had my meds delivered, which was just amazing. So I didn't have to just 
try and navigate those things, which can be really difficult when you don't even know how to navigate the world sometimes anymore. Um, and it really makes you feel cared about when all of those things are just brought to you. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. And we do care about you. And I think each and every person is, is so special and, and the team, uh, you know, really embraces kind of our small, but what's hopefully um, pivotal role in your journey. And so, um, you know, I really commend you for taking um, advantage and really being engaged in all the services and all the uh, wraparound support services that are offered. Because I think it it really makes a difference. And I love to hear that you're saying you're building on your credit and uh, recovery and employment and counseling. Um, what do you think, so you're um, in recovery. Um, can you share a little bit more about that? Well, I was also excited when um, they started having smart recovery meetings every week. It's very hard and unusual to find smart recovery. Um, places, they just don't have a lot of smart recovery meetings and most people don't know what they are. And it can be an add-on to AA and NA meetings. So I started bring, dragging a bunch of the girls with me because I said, there's a meeting here, we might as well go, you know, I mean, go, I go to NA personally. Um, I just took 18 months clean. But so I started getting the girls to go to the smart recovery meetings there with me. Um, and that, I don't know if they're still, I guess they're not still holding them obviously because of COVID, but um, one of the ladies that was running it, she was an alumni also. Yes, yeah. shout out to Kristen Zampa. <laughs> Actually, yesterday was her, she celebrated her uh, nine years of sobriety, which started the first day that she entered into Wise Place. And she's currently, um, I mean, she's one of my favorite people. She's on our board of directors um, and she's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. So she's, um, she's going to just light up to know, to, to see you on this. See. Yeah, we did take a, a break with our smart recovery um, in person because of COVID, and we're actually uh, starting that up again. It's just going to be via Zoom. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was really great to know that I was also in a place that um, if it, maybe it wasn't directly a sober living, but it valued sobriety and it valued, and so I. And I had a lot of people that I was there with, obviously from Phoenix House, a lot of people that I'd go to meetings with. Um, I was still doing my outpatient program at Phoenix House. Um, so I was going there on Saturdays and several nights a week with several of the same girls. So I'd ride back and forth or walk back and forth. Um, and we were also going to the same NA meetings together. So there was a lot of support with that too. And that was really nice. Yeah, so talk to me. I mean, you've done so much hard work you know, you've put one foot in front of the other. I know that you wake up, I think it's four or 5 a.m. What time do you wake up to go to work? I wake up at four. I actually wake up earlier now that I have a car than when I was taking the bus to work. But that's because I get up at four so I can be at work by 5.30 instead of getting on the bus at 5.30. So I can meet my boss at work. We walk her dog for three miles and then we start work at 7.30. So I don't actually have to get up that early. I just do it because we want to walk and that's the best time to walk. I wouldn't probably do it later. <laughs> um, I used to walk a lot more when I was taking the bus places because I'd get a mile here and a mile there. But now that I have a car, this is the only time I'm going to walk. So good for you. So in this time you, you bought a car. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. I started working in January and I bought a car in July. So I just oh. saved, saved, saved and bought a car. Um, and I'm still saving, saving, saving. So that's my goal. I don't really go out and do much but I like to read and I like to watch my little videos on YouTube. So I like to save. Yeah, good for you. I mean, especially with COVID, I mean, it's kind of the way of the world. We can still connect, but it's, you know, mainly through uh, virtual. Um, so, wow, good for you. I mean, I'm so incredibly inspired by you and proud of you. Um, that is a lot of changes to go through, to repair your credit, to um, seek counseling, to seek recovery programs, um, to be climbing towards that kind of second year of sobriety, um, your new job, and just hanging in there through all the changes through COVID. And I have to thank Wise Place for my job because I got my job through a Wise Place alumni. I met at a Wise Place function 
who said if I couldn't find a job, she would give me a job in a week when she went back to work. So I called her up and a week later she gave me a job. I could not find one anywhere else. And I've been looking, I've been interviewing, but I was on probation and I couldn't find a job. I'm off probation now though. I'm finally off probation. Did you um, say you're off probation? I'm off probation. Yay! Off probation Zoom. That was great. That is great. Um, so amazing. So, but yeah, I've been working at the same job since um, January and I never thought I could do telephone sales, but I can. So that's something new I learned. Yeah, you're natural. You're so genuine. And I can see how that would just kind of like radiate on the phone. How was it, you know, coming from kind of a sober living to Wise Place? Unpack that for me a little bit because they have similarities, but then, you know, they certainly have some differences too, right? Um, well, I came from treatment, which was you couldn't go anywhere without a pass. And then I came to Wise Place where um, well, I guess a year before treatment, I was in jail where you couldn't go anywhere. And then you go to treatment where you can go somewhere without a pass, you can go outside, and so that's nice. And then you go to Wise Place where you can go somewhere you just have to sign out. When I first got there, I was just like, wait, I can leave? Like, I'm allowed to just walk out? Like, nobody's going to stop me? I don't have to do anything? And so that freedom was pretty amazing. It's amazing to feel like an adult again, like an adult in charge of my life. But I don't have to tell someone, you know, that I'm going to go do this or ask permission to do it, I guess. That feels really good. It feels good that I've worked to earn that back. Yeah, we trust you, right? We, we trust you and, you know, we serve adults and, and we trust that, um, you know, we're going to kind of explain the program and, and, and opportunities. And I love that you engaged in so much of the resources um, because we do trust you. And, you know, we want you to live an independent life. Um, I, just, I didn't know how to live as an adult for my entire adult life. I didn't, for 25 years, for some, basically since I was 17 or 18, I'd just been using drugs. So I never really knew how to live as an adult, as an adult. And so this was like pretty new for me, but I remember when I first got clean, just I was thinking how excited I was but it was going to be like a whole new adventure and it really has been a whole new adventure. So talk to me. I mean, it just, it really takes so much discipline and um, working through trauma and really kind of digging deep and, and, and doing the hard work that you've done. But, you know, for you shared that for the majority of your life, um, you know, you were dealing with substances. So what, what changes? I think so many people want to know, you know, like what changed it for you? Um, how did you make that turn? I decided I didn't want to go back to jail. That was a big one. Um, and I couldn't live the life I was living anymore. Like I couldn't go forward and I couldn't go backwards and I couldn't go up and I couldn't go down. And I couldn't see my way out of where I was. It was just like, it's not even about being at rock bottom because you can, you can be fine at rock bottom. You can live at rock bottom, but it was just the way I was living was untenable. It was just untenable. And I just didn't have any, I was just done. I was just done. You just have to be done. And I was done. And it's not like you still are just ready when you're done, but I mean, I had to still go to treatment. I had to still like go inpatient and be there for 90 days. And even then I still wasn't really ready to be, like be let out. I still went to outpatient for a year after that. You know, I had to really be serious and I had to really throw myself into therapy like twice a week. I had to go to a lot of meetings. I had to get a sponsor. I had to do a lot of stuff, but um, I just, couldn't live the way I was living anymore. I was just done with it. Jennifer, you know, if you had to describe your experience at Weiss Place in one word, I know that's so hard to do, um, but how would you describe it? Because you've been through so much and you have rebuilt so much. And I'm just so curious how you would describe it. And I think I'd need two words. 
I would need, <laughs> yeah. safety and I would need independence because I really felt safe. I really feel safe there. Um, but I also feel independent. It's been a very safe place for me to land. It's been a very safe place for me um, to just have space to be out in the world again and have space to put my life back together again. Um, and that, I guess that's one thing that I never thought I could do. It just seemed for many, many years that it just seemed like too much trouble to get clean and put my life back together again. Because when you just have so much wreckage, you're like, what's the point? You're like, I've already screwed it up so bad. Like, there's no point in getting clean and trying to fix this. So having a safe place and having people that actually help you try and do that, that's really important. But I also feel independent because I'm not being coddled. So those two things, safe and independent. That is beautiful. And that is powerful, safe and independent. So thank you for breaking the rules. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Jennifer, as I, I'm, I'm, I know I've said it, but I, I truly am, you've kind of taken my breath away. Um, I'm just so inspired by you because I, you know, every day is not easy, right? And we both know that, but um, you have just shattered barriers and bureaucracy. And it's just been a pleasure to cheer you on and, and be by your side. Um, let's talk about your next steps because you're doing so well. And your next steps are to be to, you know, physically move on from Wise Place, right? Like get into your permanent home. Um, you deserve that. You deserve your own place. And we, of course, will always be, you know, once in the Wise Place family. Um, you can't get rid of us, right? We're, we're always there. We're a phone call away. We have alumni programming. Um, the support services continue as you need them. Um, but, you know, talk to me about your next steps, because I see you going down that path and you're, you've, you've got kind of everything in place, right? You have income coming in, you're saving, you're working on your credit, you bought a car, um, you're going through the meetings, um, you're sustaining um, your financial freedom, your recovery. It's just, I see so much goodness um, as you rebuild. So talk to me about your next steps. What does that look like and how does Wise Place support you in that? Well, I would like to find a place of my own again. It's been many, many, many years since I've had a place of my own. Um, Orange County is pretty expensive, so I might have to get a room share, find a roommate. Um, but hopefully maybe in Santa Ana or Orange or Anaheim, somewhere in mid Orange County, I could find a nice two bedroom to share or a studio of my own. That would be really great. And I know with the, um, the programs that Wise Place have, has in place to help people get their own place started, um, that would be really great to get that help. Yeah, and can you kind of share a bit more about why that is meaningful for you? Uh, well, it's really hard to get the first month's rent and deposit all put together even even when you're working and have money saved um, just you know, have a lot of um, unexpected expenses or emergencies come up so to get all that money together at once can be kind of daunting sometimes so that's that's a real gift I think people forget you know when you've had the um, opportunity to stay housed in one place you know you forget how there's application fees and background fees and you're often paying the first and the last month's rent and deposits and it is expensive and you're buying a bed and a refrigerator um and so i you know we definitely recognize um that that first month could be a barrier and it's not that you can't sustain it because you very much can it's just that first month is often like four times more expensive than the month to month after that. Right. Yeah. Especially well, from people that are coming from the street streets that don't have any furniture, any appliances, anything, anything, and have been out of their own place for so long. That's, that's 
it's a lot to get in one place. That's, that's a lot. Yeah, it really is. And so we recognize that. And so, you know, we are thanks to the support of the Hope and Housing Alliance. We are there for you when you are ready for that. Um, but I love that you're continuing to save. Um, and we are so excited um, for your next step. And of course, we will all stay in touch. Um, tell me what you're most excited about, about having your own place. I would love to get a dog again. I haven't had a dog in years and I miss having my dogs and my cats. I used to have a lot of pets. <laughs> oh. I really miss having pets. Well, that's going to be a fun household, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you again for, I know you've had a long day at work. And so thank you for hopping on this uh, video chat with us. Thank you for sharing with our uh, Wise Place family about the program and how, um, you know, we've been a part of your life. Thank you for allowing us that opportunity to be a part of your life. And honestly, I know I speak for our whole community when I just applaud you so much uh, you're so resilient and um, just keep it up. I mean, I love the safety and the independence. And when you leave Wise Place, um, just know that we are always a phone call away and we are just cheering you on. Thank you for the opportunity and the help with everything. It's, it's been a lifesaver. Hi, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you? We're live. I'm doing great. Doing great, Harry. Woo! We're live. I'm doing great. Doing great, Harry. All right, so we're back at our socially distant celebration of godliness and fundraising. Oh, Rateel, is there more. something you want, want to say, or do you want me to make this big announcement? Here first. Oh, <laughs> here first. Honors, Michelle. I'm, I'm pretty excited and beclumped again because we have completely, as I should know our great supporters would do, we have completely blown away our $200,000 goal, and we are at Two hundred and thirty-one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. Now, if that's not something to get gaudy about, I don't know what is. <coughs> Pardon me. So, I just want to let everybody know that this amazing amount that we've raised, there is really no limit. Every dollar that we raise can go to another woman that we will help. So. Don't hold back. The platform is going to be open for the next couple of weeks and you can continue to donate, select a key at a level you're comfortable with and you want to give at, and we will make sure that your money goes to support women like the, the participants that you've met tonight. Thank you so much. Honestly. Thank you so much, Michelle, for bringing us home. Thank you, everybody. We're just going to do some quick shout outs. Um, thank you, Harriet Harris. You have supported Wise Place for almost 30 years, um, and you continue to stand by our side and watch us uh, grow and expand. Um, Jennifer Keller, thank you so much. Tim Johnson and the Johnson family, thank you. Um, Teresa, Kiwana Santa Ana, Mike Peak, Alma, Daniel Young. Um, Eliz Hendershaw, Robert Kelly, Tony Sherman, Eric Bell, Nancy Gray, Kelly Ahmad, Kay Tavers, Diane Mondini, and I will sponsor um, two women as well. So thank you so much. You truly have been the brightest, lightest wife's place um, every day when we go to the shelter. Our whole team knows that you stand behind beside us and that has helped us get through the last few months. It truly, truly has. So thank you for being the inspiration to allow us to keep moving forward, 
to keep walking alongside the journeys of the amazing women like Annie and Jennifer and Anne Marie, who you um, saw today. So as Michelle said, you can continue to join us and be a founding member of the Hope and Housing Alliance. You can go to our website, wiseplace.org um, slash alliance, and we will be in touch, our alliance members. We have mountains to move together. Thank you so much and have a great night.